It's Free Speech Friday's time, the 8.39 39 slot, where we get in a couple of decent, free-thinking, free-speaking New Zealanders and we just chew over the events of the week. And unusual, first time at today, I, when I started the platform, I thought, wouldn't it be great if we really give, uh, make people's opinions matter and call us into talk back can also take part with the so-called experts, with the chosen ones who are the commentariat. And I had a call uh, earlier this week from Lucy. Uh, Lucy's folks live in the Coromandel. She got turned onto the platform by listening to it with her parents. Lucy is studying counselling um, in Auckland. And she sent me a great text and I said, ring in, Lucy. And Lucy rang in. And then her folks rang in. And it was like this family loving. And I said, oh, that Lucy can be the first Citizen um, Free Speech Friday that we have, the first... Um, I call her listener, listener, listener Lucy. We don't need to know Lucy's second name because she's not a public figure, but she has been kind enough to join us now. Lucy, welcome to Free Speech Fridays. It is great to have you with us. Thanks for saying yes. Thank you, Sean. Um, I like listener Lucy, the double L. Very fitting. Yeah, all right. Very good. All right. And joining you alongside you is an old Tusker. God, he's been around forever. He's got opinions on everything, and generally they're pretty good and they're pretty interesting. His name's Morris Williamson. <laughs> He's a former National Cabinet Minister and Auckland Councillor. Morris, how are you, mate? Good morning, Sean, and good morning, Lucy. All right, now, Mor- Morris, we've got to be kind to Lucy. Just, you know, don't leave her hanging and don't attack her. Kind to everybody, Sean. I'm kind to everybody. All right. Um, previous Prime Minister that I had to be kind. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I want to start, guys, a big, I guess, um, anniversary yesterday, a year since police moved in and got rid of the remaining protesters off Parliament grounds after a 22-, 23-day occupation. Um, as I said, I looked at a really good documentary called Boarding Point yesterday made by RNZ, which I thought was a very good factual piece of reportage. Uh, What do we think was achieved or is there any lasting mark left on the country by that protest, Lucy, do you think? What do you think a year on? Um, Well, I mean, I wasn't down there. I didn't completely follow it day in and day out. Um, On the March 2nd, I was watching Chantal Baker's live stream and during that time, I just remember it was just... It's like I was watching an American movie. It was like really scary and then I actually watched the boiling point yesterday um, to refresh the events and I honestly forgot how bad and scary it is Um, and I think people now who lived through that um, on either side to be honest protesters or police I think it was quite a traumatic event that they uh, went through Um, it was quite sad how it turned out but I think at the end of the day, you had, you know, a lion and a tiger in a cage and um, it just blew up. I think it's clear where the problem was and that came from the top. Um, You know, it wasn't addressed in a proper manner um, and the people didn't get, you know, the outcome that they wanted or they didn't feel heard and listened to. Um, I think it's a same history that no one will ever forget. Um, Yeah, yeah, it's quite a sad event, really. Did that answer the question? Because I kind of forgot the question. That, so look, for your, for your first answer, Lucy, that was bang on. That's what we're after. Oh. <laughs> Morris, <laughs> Morris I think Lucy said it well. It's kind of sadness. It is good, though, isn't it, that, that scenes like that are the exception, not the rule in New Zealand. Yes, but, Sean, it's to do with how you manage those things. Look, that was a protest that was unusual and that it didn't seem to have a focal point. Often there is, you know, an anti-Springbok tour or anti-Vietnam or a a farmer's protest about the the, the emissions trading scheme or something. But there seem to be a number of different factions in there. But you know what absolutely takes the wind out of the the sails or pops the balloon is if some of the ministers or government MPs had come out and gone down and said, tell us what your problems are, let's listen to you, not necessarily going to agree not necessarily going to change something. But if they'd done that right at the beginning and been prepared to just 
Now, everyone says, oh, well, then you're condoning what they are. Well, hang on. I've been in front of protesters of all sorts of lunatic stuff and sat there and been yelled at and called, you know, shocking names, but at least they felt like they've had a, a, a voice and that you've had to stand there and, and endure the sort of humiliation of it. And I just couldn't believe that instead of ministers not going down and having a, a chat and saying, well, yeah, I know that, but there are other issues that you're not taking account. What they did is turn the sprinklers on and have Trevor Mallard playing Barry Manilow. Now, what did you expect would eventually happen over time? What it attracted was a whole lot of loose cannons that weren't part of the protest. By the time it was mm. broken up, there were all sorts of anarchists and rock throwings and burnings and so on. That could have been put to bed so, so much earlier by people just being prepared to go and listen. Yep, yep, I hear you. Did you get a chance to look at that boarding point doco? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. Sorry, we uh, had a, can I recommend, a can I recommend that you do? Uh, I'll do it the, today, I the, promise uh, you. Yeah, the other thing we got ahead of uh, last week was this Tusiata Avia poem, The Savage Colonizer, which is going to be dramatised and she's going to uh, she's going to be at the Q Theatre next Thursday night as part of the Auckland uh, Arts Festival, performing a poem which has been published and promulgated quite widely now, including on the platform. Um, I first want to ask both of you what you thought of of that poem as a piece of art, Lucy? Mm, okay, well, as a piece of... Uh, everyone can have their opinion on what art is because I think art is an extremely personal expression mm. and at the end of the day, who is anyone to judge what a piece of art is? The problem behind the poem... I mean, personally, I got goosebumps listening to it. I was like, oh, what is what is going on? This is... You found it scary. Ludicrous. Yeah, I did. I did. And, you know, and, and, and I spoke to a friend at dinner last night, and she said to me, the first thing she said to me was, well, what happens if people start to take those literal words and, and, and actually use them? It's, you know, borderline a manifesto, and... When you come into talking about art, it is difficult because people have the freedom uh, to express, to be creative, and I think that's amazing. Um, it shouldn't be funded and it shouldn't be spoken in front of these people, but it is, it is a hard okay. a hard line. So you guess. say, it sounds to me like, and it's a difficult one, Lucy, I think you're stuck in the position a lot of people are. I don't want to cancel anyone, but I don't want to pay for rubbish like this. Yeah, well, I don't really, you know, who's to say um, that we can cancel an artist or artist yeah. or whatnot? Um, but, you know, it shouldn't be, she shouldn't be given a hundred grand yeah. to say the hateful poem, uh, wherever it comes from behind them and the draw, yeah. her, um, like, well, you know, I guess we trauma. should turn, I Lucy, I guess we should turn to Morris because I'm pretty sure that the Auckland Council will make, be making a contribution to the Arts Festival. And mm. probably, I don't know if Q uh, Theatre is an Auckland Council-supported venue, Morris, but why are you supporting hate speech like this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I'm, I'm guilty. You need to take me out and whip me. Look, um, I've got two Well, you can do this. that. You can do that whipping at the story time at, at a Auckland Public that, Library. That, that, that's right. That's right. A good flogging won't hurt anybody. Look, th th I've got two points with this. Wh one, it is to do with public funding, and I think that the idea that people are out there working hard and trying to make a living and their tax pays, looking down at their PAY part of their pay slip and know that's going off to fund this, I, I, that, that just galls me. But, but there's a second point to this, and it's the double standard. If you had somebody publish from the sort of white supremacist side a poem that said you go out with a hunting knife and start stabbing black people, there'd be just chaos. There'd be outrage. There'd be this is wrong, this is disgrace. And it is. And it is, but somehow we've got so precious that we're okay with it coming from one way but not the other. Uh -huh. All right, so what is the solution to that? Well, I, I, I would have just thought that uh, people like Creative New Zealand should be a little bit more careful because they're bordering on, and Lucy raised this, they're bordering on getting themselves into a bit of trouble. You fund something that's going out encouraging sort of an activity and then some nutter follows through on what you've been promoting as part of your play or whatever, 
you've now got legal issues r- related to were you inciting that behaviour? And, of course, you know that that's illegal in New Zealand to incite violence or, or anything like that by your behaviour. So, you know, Creative New Zealand should have, I thought, run a more focus lens over this stuff and said, mm, hang on, hang on. Well, is, can I tell you, we are getting stonewalled by Creative New Zealand, by the Auckland yeah, Arts Festival and the Office of the, uh, the Human Rights Commission. And it seems to me, and I, I don't know, Lucy, if you'd agree with this, there, this guy, Ming Foon, if anyone does anything that's white on brown racist, he'll scream racism and systemic racism and issue public statements. He will not talk on this. There are over no, 60 okay. complaints. <laughs> So, Ming Foon, I've seen his name and I haven't even, I don't know who he is, to be honest. <laughs> I do have just a point, though. Isn't this just hypocrisy? Aren't, aren't we all trying to get into this, you know, being inclusive and not offensive? And isn't, isn't this where this agenda heads? Is it a hypocrisy by saying, that it's okay that she said this, but right, we're supposed to be going into a, a non-offensive. So it's it's hypocritical. I think Morris totally bang on. I reckon if a white person said that, it would be an uproar. It would be, you know, World War Three in New Zealand. And it's just, it's hypocritical. And it doesn't set a good example for anyone. For anyone in New Zealand, yeah. it's not beneficial. And I guess when we look for leadership, maybe the Minister, Minister, Minister of Arts and Culture, who is who, that's, that, that's uh, Jill, Willow Jean Prime, maybe she could say something. Um, maybe the Human Rights Commission could at least issue, a, I, I don't know, some sort, sort of warning and statement. Meantime, Morris, the question is, and I hate to engage in co- cancel culture, uh, should this performance go ahead next Thursday night at the Q Theatre at around 7 o'clock at night? Oh, yeah, look, I, I, I'm such a libertarian. As long as it's not affecting my life or hurting people in my family, go to it. If people are going to pay money, it should have been able to fund itself if it's got an audience that wants to watch it. It shouldn't be a taxpayer-funded Well, you're still going to pay 30 to 60 bucks to get in. You'd get a student <laughs> discount, Lucy, if there are any tickets left, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, i got I got to start to utilise that more. But, you know, I started realising that I actually paid for her to... To, to you know make this poem anyway, so I don't yeah. really feel like giving him any more of my. All right, look, time. I don't, I don't well, think I'm, that I'm, one's I'm, going I'm away. I'm washing, I'm washing my hair that night, so I can't go. Sadly. <laughs> <laughs> Are you doing some readings at a library? Look, I'll throw that in. I know we didn't have it on the list. A drag queen's reading in in public libraries seems to be a bit of an issue. It's an imported issue from the United States. Uh, I just say story time isn't for people to spread diversity or sexual fetishes. Morris and and council and publicly funded institutions shouldn't be facilitating it. It's not a free speech issue. It's just a normal issue. Oh, it doesn't worry me. Look, okay. if the parents of the kids, are, if the parents are letting the kids go yep. along to it and participate, I think it's nuts. But I, I'm not prepared to to start. <laughs> You're not going to die in a ditch on it. I get you, no, Lucy. No, 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 no. Lucy, what about you? Um. Well, okay, I'll, I'll say it like this. I've been through my trials and tribulations growing up. I've been a vegan. I've been a left wokist. I've gone through that. And, you know, every time I'd go out to see a drag show, I would go to an R18 club on K Road and have a great time. Yeah. Putting these people in, in, a, in a kid's library, uh, each parent to their own, if that's what they want to do, but... I don't. I, I think it's more of a an adult thing, and these kids, you know, they need to be children. Get a clown, you know. Same thing. Sean, Sean, yeah. Sean, I tell you, I tell you what worries me much more about libraries than that is rewriting of the books where we're going ah, well, to. Ah, well, that kind of. Uh, you see, you picked my segue before I segue. <laughs> Basically, um, a pre segue. The pre segue segue. So, roll, they mm. first they came for Roald Roald Dahl. And I really oh. <laughs> realised how serious this was. They're going to mess with Ian Fleming, with James Bond. No, oh, more, look, no just, more pussy galore. Are you kidding me? Just just stop <laughs> any of this. I mean, the fat controller in Thomas the Tank Engine, I used to read it to my kids. They love the fat control. Jesus taught Sean, I'm fat. Tell, you can tell me I'm can fat. I, I can mind. I tell you, Morris, um, and this was taught at journalism school, in post-grad <laughs> journalism school in Christchurch, 
um, for many, many years. I, when I worked at the home show briefly a long time ago, went up to Otaki to the model railway there and I filmed a piece for the home show called Thomas the Politically Correct. Uh, tank engine. <laughs> it took me two days with a camera crew. I voiced it myself. Oh, and, brilliant. And it was the only feature article that was replayed on the home show due to popular request. Oh, brilliant. I and it has it, been... It on YouTube? Uh, Paul Norris used it as a teaching tool at the broadcasting school in Christchurch. It was oh. so long ago. It was the days before digital. We were still analogue yeah, then. And I must hunt it out. But it went something like this. Um... Thomas the politically correct tank engine was talking to the physically <laughs> over-endowed controller and the two gay carriages, Barry and Gary, who were hooking up all the time. And, and I just took the piss out of everything. And this must have been back in the 19... God, the 1990s, I think, I, I was working there. Yeah, good stuff. And good I, stuff. And, but I'll tell you what, all the crap that I was predicting in that news story has come true. And they will come. They will come is, for I'll Thomas you, the Tank Engine next. I tell you what's worrying me is uh, if you ever read something from Shakespeare like Titus Andronicus, you've got to read it. There are ripping of arms off and cutting of tongues and disemboweling people. The whole thing is ghastly. This Roman general is just—it's shocking stuff. Well, we should have to go through all of Shakespeare stuff and take that all out and talk about having a group family conference uh, with the Goths rather than slaughtering them with axes and so on. I mean, where does this stop? Yeah, well, Lucy, where does it stop? I was saying yesterday, maybe we have to go into the Sistine Chapel saying God is gendered there. We need to touch up. Michelangelo got it wrong. Let's get out the roller and make him sort of gender non-specific, Lucy. <laughs> Well, um, I think if you're going to say that God is non-binary, I think that's just straight blasphemy, and I don't think that <laughs> that's the right thing that anyone can say. Um, but, you know, I, Ben sent me through some, some topics and I was like, okay, let's go into Roald Dahl. And this man was born in the very early 1900s. He grew up in the, you know, a polar opposite time to where we are now. This man is now in his grave and people are trying to change his words, his art, his voice and what he gave us as a form of entertainment, um, you know, and, and whatever it's for. You know, if you want to make it, because from what I believe, it's um, going to be a Netflix series and it's something about not wanting to lose a million dollars um, to, you know, put his, his thing on Netflix if people are going to get offended. Um, why not just make your own thing? Why not just release your creativity and make something that's inclusive um, not offensive, and, you know, happy day. Good on yeah. you, go for it. Lucy, Can't this, links back, this links back to Tisiata Avia. Exactly. Because exactly. are yeah. we going to sanitise her work? No, of course we wouldn't. Even no, people no. who disagree with no. it are going to let it be. Yeah. But I Correct. don't know, there's some woke wave sweeping the world. I mean, if you don't like mm. Roald Dahl's books, write your own freaking books. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Well, well, I yep. want to put a word in on behalf of all the ugly people, because I'm one. I just think we've got a right to be recognised in society. Us ugly people should have a voice. Yeah, yeah, that's... Where do we stop? <laughs> and like I'm saying, you know, if if people looked at Picasso and said, I don't like those straight lines, oh, let, let's, you know, or those sunflowers by Van Gogh, oh, they're not really realistic. We better change that. I was broadcasting minister for nine years, Sean, and we used to get these letters all the time from people. I watched this program on TV NZ the other night, and Angela Dordney had bare boobs or something, and so on. And I used to write back a standard letter. There's a little red button. There's a little red button at the top of your remote. It's called off. Press. Don't watch it if you don't like yeah. it. Yeah, Morris, when you were broadcasting right the manager, end. the off uh, uh, minister, the off button was actually on the television, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> You have to get up, that's right. <laughs> Lucy, do young people sit around clutching their pills, worrying about being offended or not having a safe space? I think that some people do, but if you're offended, uh, yeah, off switch, turn it off, close the book, and find something that's inclusive. Simple. Yeah. Also, also, in saying this, you know, you can't let 
the tail wags the dog. You can't let the people dictate the majority. And of course, we need to include people and in whatever. But, uh, you know, what's the goal? Mm. Because it's smelling a bit like communism to me. And I'm just not really into that. And I just. <laughs> What, what's the off. proportion, Lucy? You're at, a, you're at a tertiary institution, you're learning counselling, presumably there are a lot of woke people doing that. But, but but I, because I'm not in that milieu, because I'm not in that culture, are you all wandering around looking for things to be offended at, about getting angry at boomers? <laughs> or is there, is there some sort of cultural split between the cool kids and the not woke kids or whatever? Okay, um, so I won't, definitely won't go into anything to do with the studies um, because, you know, I'm not trying to ruin my career by, you know, getting cancelled or whatnot. But I... Oh, hang, hang on, Lucy, I want to stop you there. Mm. Do you live in a world where saying what you think about something could get you cancelled just because someone would choose that you weren't politically correct or all right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Wow, I, that's sad. Totally. Yeah, and, 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 you know, there are times where, and I'll say this in any setting I make it super broad, um, there are times where I have opinions on things, and if I say it, then I'm a transphobe, or if I say it, I'm racist. And do you know what? It's just fact, and it's also just, we need to focus on the facts, focus on the science, and, you know, if people want to, people can do what they want. Go do your biz. I don't care. Don't put words in my mouth. Don't try, make me say, or, or feed into your ideology. But also don't rewrite a man's historical, uh, you know, period. That's it. Do you like James Bond, Lucy? Yeah. I do. I do. Um, I think I watched it years yeah. ago. All right. I can't spot what's vibing. Morris Williamson, James Bond is the coolest misogynist there is, isn't he? I was absolutely, it was just buckets of misogyny just dripping. It was from the moment it started, you had sort of Honor Blackman as pussy galore and uh, Goldfinger. It was just, and, and in the end, we all loved it and everyone used to go to it. It was, a, it was I guess now we'll rewrite the whole thing and it'll, he'll have to be gay. He'll probably be gay. Yeah, he'll probably be gay and he, he'll, he'll probably, you know, have some really weird fetish. Look, it's just silly. And the most people think things are silly. And if you've got an audience that want to go and listen to that lady's poem, they should go along and they should pay their fee and listen to it. I'm I'm a big fan of the libertarian view of it. All right, it's just not my not my cup of tea. Okay, look, we haven't got into Rob Campbell, who I think was author of his own demise quite deliberately uh, this week, sacked from the EPA. But but I was really interested in another state employee who came out on Twitter with quite a forceful view. This is Muriama Kamo, journalist presumably therefore impartial, uh, the presenter of TVNZ Sunday show. And she came out yesterday and tweeted, wouldn't it be great, basically, if Māori could get free time off work to learn to reo because it was stolen from them? Mm. What do no. we... <laughs> What's just, just a no, no, Morris? No, no. Look, if you want to learn something, you should go along and, and go to a course, and I'm sure there are heaps of te reo courses wherever... The people are, and by the way, I, in my old electorate where I live of Pakaranga, huge number of new migrants come in and go to school and only speak English all day. But their parents keep their language alive at home and keep them learning their whatever language mm -hmm. they came from. This idea that some taxpayer or some poor employer is going to have to fund you to go off and learn something, no, just no. All Stop right, it. Lucy. Um, I yeah, no. I I completely agree with Morris in that. Um, you know, and obviously because it's just a tweet, there's not a lot of context. It's, it's really open to speculation. But, you know, if the business owners have to pay for the time off, um, then absolutely not. If the government wants to fund this, um, you know, I, I would like to say where my tax dollars go. But, um, you know, I think if they wanted to go down that track, it's business by business, it's up to the business and employee and, and the, you know, the employers to decide if that's what they want to do. Uh, because, you know, you can't send every cafe barista off to a course for, you know, how many days and, and there's lots of loops, loopholes. Yeah, it's just a bit ridiculous.
I don't right. know. No, All right. No. Finally, finally, I, I don't imagine either of you are marching, striking for the climate uh, this afternoon between two and three, or two <laughs> and six. Lucy? Not. No, um, I'm cleaning my house to make sure my parents think that I'm a um, gracious, beautiful child. Um, that's what I'll be doing. <laughs> All right, Morris, you're not. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be deworming the cat. So um. yeah, lo- or washing your hair, <laughs> in between washing your hair. <laughs> I don't thing, know those two. In between washing look, my the hair. thing is, we hey, have... look, listen with regard with regards to climate change. Yeah. I tell you, you've got to, Sean, if you haven't already. There's a guy called Constantine Kissam. Uh, he's a, a comedian in Britain, but if you go to if you go to YouTube, Constantine with a K, kiss him. He puts a brilliant, brilliant article about how the world is going to suffer from climate change no matter what we want to do because it's the poor nations like Asia and South America that are wanting to get to prosperity and a standard of living and whatever. He said if Britain fell into the sea and was gone tomorrow, it will make not one jot of difference to the yeah. climate because the big drivers are coming out of the mass yeah. population. Well, also, of look, the latest round of, of hysteria around climate change has been driven by Gabriel. Ian Wishart, investigative journalist, has done some great work. He's looked back of our historical records and he's found that NIWA have simply erased or not mentioned um, scores of extreme weather events on the scale of Gabriel in New Zealand's history. Correct, it's, correct. It's, yeah. Absolutely right. Yeah, deep. absolutely right. Yeah. It's called climate change, and it's gone on for I think four point six billion years that the Earth's been in. Here year. at the platform, we call it weather. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, I hadn't heard that <laughs> word, but I'll, I'll look it up. Yeah, I love that. L- L- Lucy, how many of your compadres, contemporaries, are absolutely obsessed by this madness of climate change? Uh, you know, Sean, I'm quite. A bit, I'm a bit antisocial these days, and I feel like I can't relate to a lot of people. Uh, that's why I sit at home and listen to your show. But um, I was a climate wokist for a second too, and, you know, the sky's falling, the sky's falling. Um, but then, you know, social media dominates, and it's just everywhere. So any sort of weather event anywhere, it's just documented to an extreme. And, you know, back 50 years, we weren't hearing about what was going on on the other side of the world. So I think now that it's seen by people it turns into a big deal um you know i who knows what's really going on i mean the united nations cleared it up apparently but our mainstreamers didn't pick up on it even the ipcc so, says that extreme weather events can't be directly linked to climate change which is just bloody yeah. hilarious hey guys that is one of the most fun free speech fridays we've had in age lucy you're incredible morris what well, are you going to pass judgment on lucy is she any good no, oh, Lucy, Lucy's brilliant. Lucy's brilliant. Actually, we need a hell of a lot more Lucy's on the planet. Yeah, we do. Aww. And on the platform. So, listener Lucy, take and a bow. And on the platform. Take a bow. That wasn't that yep. wasn't too bad, was it, Lucy? <laughs> no, it, was, it wasn't too bad, you know, and um, I'll be looking in the mirror afterwards to ensure I don't have any grey hairs yeah. uh, <laughs> after the pressure of this talk. But, you know, it was fun. Um, I think me, me too, me too. My sister, so. <laughs> Yeah, you and I both, Morris. It's all good, mate. Good on, good on yeah, you. Yeah, no, guys. actually, uh, there, there's a lot likely to be because I can walk into a forest and be the oldest living thing there. So yeah, Morris, you go and wash your hair and, and clean your cat or whatever, or deworm yourself de- de- and, and, wash, and wash your cat. Yeah, <laughs> Morris Williamson, listener Lucy, what a great free speech Friday.